I remember saying, um, you broke my neck, you son of a bitch, or something along those lines. How did you know your neck was broken? Uh, it, it just went limp. It's a weird feeling. Everything just got disconnected. Uh, and there was, a, there was a loud click, and that's it. And, and, from then, and from then on, I haven't felt anything. Um, I basically woke up in, on the way to intensive care to be told that I was going to be a quadriplegic. I spent 40 days in intensive care. I think I had six heart attacks or something. I had to learn to breathe again. I've lost use of my abdominal muscles. Uh, basically, everything below my shoulders is gone. I can't move it. Um, I can't feel hot or cold below my shoulders. Um, my hand, I can only move this much. And that's really it. And that's not very useful at all. Like, it's enough to tilt that back and forth. And sometimes at the end of the day, it's so tired I can't move it, so might as well not be there. I cry half a dozen times a day spontaneously. Um, I, need, I need two people to help me get to the bathroom and then do the bathroom, shower, get dressed, everything feeding, scratching my nose. How much force would the police have had to use to affect such profound damage? I, 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 I'm not exactly telling the police how to do their job, but this ain't it. This isn't the way. Unless their aim was to break my neck, in which case, why? If you could speak to those three officers who were there on the night, what would you say to them? I'd like to know why. I'd, I'd like to know what they knew or, or they thought that they knew that could possibly justify this. Or if it was a horrible accident, then why don't you just say that that's what it is and so we can, I, I don't know. I don't know how, how I could be expected to move on from here. Uh, obviously, my family are in a ridiculous position where they're literally watching, I'm watching them grieve for me in front of me. Um, I look at them in the eye and tell them that I don't want to live. I don't, I don't know what to say to them after that. You know, I, as, as far as my sister's concerned, she's been handed back a, a, a brother with a broken neck and been said, you know, look after this. Uh, that's the point of view of my whole family. They're like, here's your broken son or brother. You can deal with it. I, I don't want to deal with it. I don't want them to deal with it. Alex, what have you learned about Chris throughout this ordeal? Uh, he's a lot more resilient than he thinks he is. Do not call me brave, I'll lose my shit. I will not call you brave. No. It's, not, it's not about being brave. It's just, you know, he says, I can't do this. And I'm like, but you actually are. And you've gone another day and you've survived six heart attacks. And I know you didn't want to survive them, but we're glad you did. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.